Let's spend some time in prayer. Jesus, we are so glad, knowing what was coming, you rode into Jerusalem on this day. And thank you that you laid down your life on the cross for us, bearing our sins. And Lord, we're here to say thank you that you walked out of the grave and said we could too. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Lord, I pray as we read about your death and resurrection today that, that for many who, who it might be the first time that you would open eyes and draw people to you. And for those of us who've heard it many times, Lord, help us to, to be in awe again of your great love for us. And Lord, I pray this week as we pray and we invite that you would fill both of our campuses and all of our services up next week with people to hear the gospel and that many, many would come to faith in you. Lord, we're here today because we need you. We're broken, needy people, and Lord, our nation needs you, and so we're praying for revival. You're our only hope. Will you not yourself revive us again that your people may rejoice in you. Lord, may that revival begin with us today and may it spread throughout our community and nation. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Um, we are one week out from Easter and if you have your Bible, turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Um, today's message is called when disciples' hearts catch fire, we're going to read about when the disciples met the resurrected Christ, their hearts caught on fire, and they went out and began to share that with everyone, with everyone, because good news is for sharing. That's what uh, the point of today's message is, is that uh, good news is for sharing. When you have good news, you can't keep it to yourself. You, you simply have to share it with other people. So let me set up Luke 24 for you. It was on this day uh, that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. On Friday, he was crucified. After he died, after he died, he was put in a tomb. A stone was rolled against the tomb. The tomb was sealed, and, and Roman guards were put around it to make sure that no one stole the body. And uh, the disciples are afraid. They're hiding. And now we pick up the story. In Luke 24, verse 1. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. Now the good news about the women is they loved Jesus. That's the good news. The bad news is <laughs> they didn't believe that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. They didn't come. They were not bringing lawn chairs. They didn't bring lawn chairs early on that day and popcorn so that they could be eyewitnesses to the greatest event in the history of the world when a dead man got up and walked out of the tomb. No, they were coming to finish preparing his body for burial. They expected him to still be in the tomb. Their biggest concern was who was going to roll the stone away from, for them, and that proved not to be a problem. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Can you imagine the women... Oh, how we love Jesus. And we're coming to prepare his body. And how are we going to move this stone? And, and the stone has been moved, moved away. And when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. What happened to him? What happened to him? They didn't believe he had risen. Where is his body? While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood new, near them in dazzling clothing. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to have been there? Their dazzling clothing... And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Man, I get goosebumps every time I read this, don't you? Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Isn't that the greatest news the world has ever heard? Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He's not here, but he has risen. Listen, good news is for sharing. And the first, the first to share the good news were the angels who said, he's not here, he's risen. When was the last time you shared that with someone? Has it been a while? Oh, so many hospital rooms. I've gone in when people were dying. So many funerals I've done 
where I've been able to share the good news. Listen, a dead man got up and walked out of the tomb and said, we could too. Isn't that the greatest news ever, that a dead man rose and said, we could too? Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he's risen. Remember? So often we don't need to learn new things, but we do need to be reminded, right? Remember? how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee. Don't you remember what he said, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again? Isn't that the gospel? It had to happen this way. People are sinners. Christ died for our sins. It was the only way. He rose on the third day. That's what proves. That's what proves that he had conquered sin and death. Death couldn't hold him anymore and he walked out. And they remembered his words. Oh, yeah. He taught us that over and over again. They remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And so the women became the second. The angels were the first to share the good news. And then the women went and they shared the good news because good news is for sharing. You won't believe what happened. The stone was rolled away. Jesus is alive. But these words appeared to them as nonsense and they would not believe them. The apostles just said, didn't happen, didn't happen. You know why I believe the Bible? Because it's true. You know why I know it's true? Because if they made it up, they'd never portray themselves so badly, right? Really, I mean, you do know then that the testimony of a woman was not considered reliable. So if you made up the story, you would never say that the first people to share the good news were women because no one would have believed. If the apostles made it up, they never would have portrayed themselves so badly. I mean, track with me a little bit. If you go to North Korea, you know what you'll hear? That Kim Jong-un climbed Mount Everest when he was four. You'll hear that he broke 10 seconds in the 100 meters when he was eight. You'll hear that he memorized the encyclopedia when he was 11. Listen, all these amazing things are said about him and nothing negative. If the apostles had made up the story, they would have portrayed themselves so much better. But they said, listen, when we heard it, we didn't believe because that's what happened. But Peter got up uh, and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen wrappings and he went away to the home marveling at what had happened. Listen, what they said was true. What they said was true. The tomb was empty. The tomb was empty. And behold, two of them were going that very day. Now, Jesus had 12 apostles, and then he had a wider group of disciples. These two were from the wider group. Two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. Um, You see this map here? Uh, before GPS people had maps. Do you see Jerusalem down just about the top of the Sea of Gal- the Dead Sea? You see Jerusalem down there? And if you go to the northwest from there, they're traveling from Jerusalem seven miles to Emmaus. They're walking on this road, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. Now, This is one of my favorite stories of Jesus. I mean, have you ever wondered whether Jesus really enjoyed life? Have you ever wondered uh, if Jesus had a sense of humor? If you've ever wondered, this passage will answer that, okay? So so they're talking about all that's happening. While they're talking about these things uh, and discussing them, Jesus himself approached them and began traveling with them. So he comes along and just starts walking with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. How did that happen? I don't know. Maybe it's just because they didn't believe he was alive that they didn't recognize him, but they didn't recognize him. (laughs) But he said to them, what are these words that you're exchanging with one another as you were walking? What are you guys talking about? And they stood still, uh, looking sad. One of them named Cleopas. Isn't it interesting one is named and one is not? But Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? Are you the only one who doesn't know what's been happening? (laughs) And look at what Jesus said. And he said to them, What things? (laughs) Don't you know he's having the time of his life? 
He's about to share with them the best news that the gospel or that the world has ever heard, that a dead man came to life, and he's having fun with them. What things? And they said to him, the things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty indeed in word in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priest and, and the rulers delivered him uh, to the sentence of death and crucified him. <clears throat> But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. How did they miss it so much? How did they miss Jesus so much? Well, in the Old Testament, when they were talking about the coming Savior, the Messiah, they would talk about a conquering king, but they would also talk about a suffering servant. They would talk about the Lion of Judah, but they would also talk about the Lamb of God. And since the Jews were oppressed by the Romans, what they were really looking for was a conquering king. They were looking for the Lion of Judah, and so they missed the suffering servant. They missed the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But also some women among us amazed us while they, <clears throat> when they went to the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Didn't it happen to, have to happen this way? Don't you have a sin problem? Didn't you need a Savior? This is the way it had to be. This is the way God's Word said it had to begin. Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the Scriptures. Maybe you're new. The Bible is not a collection of unrelated stories from beginning to end. It's one story gospel, and it's all about Jesus. And wouldn't you have loved to have been there? Wouldn't you have loved to have been walking with those two men as Jesus started in Genesis and went all the way to Malachi and showed them all the verses that pointed to him? Wouldn't you? I mean, don't you know he went to Genesis 3 and said, remember, remember how God told Adam and Eve that the Savior would be born of a woman? I'm that one. And he went to Genesis 12 and said, don't you remember? God said, Abraham, in one of your descendants, all the nations will be blessed. That's me. And don't you remember he said that the Savior would come from the tribe of Judah? I did. And don't you remember what he told David, that he, that he would come from his house? Don't you remember? And don't you remember Isaiah? Isaiah said that the Savior would be born of a virgin, and I was. And don't you remember Isaiah 53, how I would die? Don't you remember? Remember Micah, how Bethlehem, I was born in Bethlehem. Wouldn't you have loved to have been there? As, as Jesus just, I'm, I'm sure many of them we would know and many of them we would see Jesus in ways we hadn't seen him before. Wow. Walking with Jesus, seeing Jesus in all the places of the Old Testament. And they approached the village where they were going and he acted as though he were going further, uh, farther. And, but they urged him saying, stay with us for it is getting toward evening and the day is nearly, now nearly over, so he went in to stay with them. So they said, listen, don't go on, come and have dinner with us. And uh, some of you say, man, I'd do anything if Jesus would come and have dinner with me. And, and you know where I'm going, my favorite verse, what did Jesus say? He said, what, I, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice, I'll come in and dine with him and he with me. Do you know that Jesus lives in me? Does he live in you? What they got to do one night, I get to do every day of my life. I get to wake up and have breakfast with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? So he went in to stay with them. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. So he broke the bread and gave it. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. So the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw him. And then he vanished. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while we were, he was explaining the scriptures to us? Um, has that ever happened to you? Man, that's my story. Isn't it yours? I can remember going to Young Life. 
And my young life leader began to share the gospel with me and my heart burned within me. Jesus opened my eyes to see my sin. I saw Jesus. I, uh, I had never seen him before. And, and when I was invited, I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe I want to follow you. Isn't that your story? Isn't it even true today as a Christian when, when God's word is shared, doesn't your heart burn within you? That's what I'm praying for today, that our hearts would burn. Some of us for the first time, some of us uh, again, and that we would be so amazed with Jesus that we'd have to go and share him with others. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up <clears throat> that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with him, saying, The Lord has really risen and appeared to Simon. Listen, when they heard the good news, the first thing they did was what? They went to their brothers and said, He's risen. He's risen because good news is for sharing. When was the last time? When was the last time you went to someone and said, Jesus has forgiven me, that Jesus has risen, that I get to do life with Jesus? I get to, because when you have good news, you have to share it, don't you? They went and shared. The angels shared the good news. The women shared the good news. The two shared the good news. The Lord has really risen and appeared to Simon. They began to relate their experiences on the road. He walked with us. He explained scripture to us. How can we get up and have breakfast with Jesus without going and sharing with someone what he taught us in the morning? And he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. While they were telling these things, he himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Now, don't miss this. They're talking about Jesus and Jesus comes and stands in their midst. Doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't it? Anybody remember the Great Commission? What did Jesus say? He said what? He said, go and make disciples of all the nations, didn't he? And he said, baptize them and teach them. And he said, what? Look, look what? I am with you always. Even to, he says, listen, when you're talking about me, look around me and you'll see me there because when you talk about me, I'll be there. How many people have told me, you know, Smiley, when I began to share the gospel with others, I really understood it myself. Do you want to know Jesus? Share him with someone else. Do you want to overcome your doubts? Tell someone else about him. Do you want to experience Jesus? Share him with someone else. Because when we talk about him, you know what happens? He comes and stands in our midst. Isn't that ha what happened? While they were telling these things, he himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were seeing a spirit and he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. They had doubts and Jesus didn't scold them, but he gave them evidence. Look, look, touch. Jesus walked out of the tomb on the third day. And he said, we would too. One day our bodies will be raised up and we will have new bodies. But it seems like Jesus will still have his wounds. And every time we see Jesus, we will be reminded at the price he paid that we could enjoy him now and forever. They still had doubts, and so he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them, because ghosts don't eat, and he ate. Uh, anybody in here like to eat? Anybody like to eat? Isn't it great to know that when our bodies are raised up and we're on a new earth that we're going to eat, right? That Jesus with his new body ate with them like we will too one day. Now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Now in the Older Testament, 
the Older Testament, the Bible is like a library. It's not like a biography. There's different sections in the library. And in the Older Testament, there was the law, the first five books. And in the Older Testament, there was the wisdom literature and Psalms as a part of that. And in the Older Testament, there was the prophets. And what he was saying is everything from Genesis to Malachi, it all pointed to me in all sections of the library. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Notice what, what, what really changed them. It wasn't the evidence. It was that the Lord opened their eyes. I am so thankful that one day Jesus opened my eyes and I saw him. And if you're a Christian, aren't you glad he opened your eyes? And, and maybe today the Lord is opening your eyes, opening your eyes to understand the gospel, right? And what is the gospel? And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer, and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning with, from Jerusalem. There's the gospel. Now the word gospel means good news, but it contains some bad news. And in Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, verse 6, look at the first two lines. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. The Bible says we have a sin problem. How many of us? How many? Have you noticed we live in a culture that's divided? Anybody notice that? And what, the way most people see it is that there's good guys and bad guys, right? But, but the gospel says there's something that unites all of us together. What unites all Everyone in our country together is everyone in our country needs Jesus, especially me. We share that in common. Often people say, well, I don't have any. Yes, we all need Jesus, right? The Bible says we have a sin problem. Now, I did a funeral on Monday, and it was really interesting. Uh, all these people, before I spoke, got up, and they, they told all these stories about the lady who died, and some of them were not G-rated, they were more like uh, PG or uh, R-rated. And, but what they all did is they all apologized to me. They all turned to me and apologized to me for telling those stories in my presence. And I thought, listen, I'm way more flawed than you are. But if you're afraid to tell those stories in my presence, what do you imagine it's going to be like on that day when you stand before God and give an account of every word, every thought, and every deed? Don't fear me, fear God. Do you know we will all stand before the judgment seat of God and all the words that we've said that we don't want people in here to know God knows. And the thoughts that we don't want people, God knows. And the deeds we've done, that's what we should be scared of. We should fear God because God is just and he must punish sin. And he says what we deserve for our sin is hell. Well, Smiley, what do we do? Once we understand our sin, then we can appreciate a Savior. Listen to the second. Once we understand the bad news, the first two lines, the second two lines become really good. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Oh, when we've seen our son, and then we see Jesus, he's God who became a man and lived a perfect life because to get into heaven, you have to be perfect, and we're not. He did that for us, and he went to the cross, and we see our sins placed on Jesus, and he died in our place. most amazing thing I've ever heard. Isn't it true of you? He died on the cross for our sins. And when he died, he said, it's finished. He, it's finished, right? Paid in full. And then he was buried. And you know what happened, right? On the, on the third day, he walked out of the grave. And that proves that he had conquered sin and death and they could hold him no longer. And so he rose from the dead, proving he had conquered sin and death. And he offers us eternal life. He offers us the forgiveness of sins. He offers us the chance to do life and eternity with him. And what does he require of us? Back to Luke. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I pray your minds have been opened too. And he said, and thus it is written that the Christ would suffer. He did and rise again from the dead. And that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. How can we experience forgiveness? 
How can we do life and eternity with Jesus? Well, it starts with repentance. Do you know what the word repentance literally means? It's a Greek word, meta, to change, and noia is the mind. And so to have eternal life begins with repentance. There's a change in our thinking. Repentance is like a turning from, and faith is like a turning to. And good news, we love to say that repentance and faith really is as simple as A, B, C, where we admit and believe and commit. The admit is we change our thinking about ourselves And we admit, and if you never have, won't you? Jesus, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. We see our sin, have you? And then we believe. That's changing our thinking about who Jesus is, isn't it? He's not primarily a teacher. He's our Savior that I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose. And then the C, the commit, is a turning from trusting in ourselves and trusting in Christ, right? As Savior. Jesus, come in and forgive me. And give me eternal life, won't you? It's to trust Him as Lord. I want you to be Lord of my life. And from this day forward, as you give me strength, I want to follow you. And if you haven't, won't you repent and put your faith in Christ? Won't you admit and believe and commit? You can do that now where you are. I'd be glad to assist you when we close in prayer. And if you have, you are witnesses of these things. How can we be forgiven without sharing that with others? how they can be forgiven. How can we be delivered from hell for everlasting life without sharing that with others? How can we walk with Jesus and have breakfast with Him every day of our lives without wanting to share that with others? You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And He led them out as far as Bethany, Where's Bethany? Let's go back to our map. See, if Emmaus was northwest of Jerusalem, now look southeast, really close, but southeast of Jerusalem, there's Bethany. That's where Mary and Martha was, right? That's where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So he he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried into heaven, and they were worshiping him. Uh, And they, after worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. So throughout the story today, we saw good news is for sharing. The angels had good news. They shared it. The, 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 The women had good news. They shared it. The two had good news. They shared it. The 11 began to share the good news too. And we get to do that too. So if the point today was that uh, the gospel, good news is for sharing, the, the action step of today is going to be to share the good news, to share the good news. So I want to help you get the chronology right here. Okay, on this day, Jesus rides into Jerusalem, right? Palm Sunday. On Friday, on Friday, he's crucified. The third day, he rises from the dead, right? And he appears to his disciples over a period of, somebody knows, over 40 days. So that makes 43, right? So Pentecost is 50 days after Passover. So one week after Jesus ascends into heaven, what? The Holy Spirit falls, the church is birthed, and the gospel begins to spread out. And the gospels, or the apostles shared the gospel with people who shared the gospel with people who shared the gospel with people, and that's why we heard it today. And we get to be a part of that now. And at Good News, his last command is our first concern. And in every gospel, it ends with the Great Commission. We see it here in verse 46. Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You were witnesses of these things, that we've all been called to be a part of sharing the good news. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, not only the end of all four Gospels, but in Acts as well, it all ends with the same thing. Notice, but you, and if this was written in Southern, it'd say, but y'all. Because what what makes the Newer Testament different from the Older Testament was in the Older Testament, the Holy Spirit only empowered a few people. 
What makes the Newer Testament different is the Holy Spirit is poured out on all of God's people because we're all called to be his witnesses. But all of you have received, will receive power. Notice every Christian has been given power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And I want you to notice the power is in a person. The power is in a person, the Holy Spirit, who indwells believers for a purpose. So why have we been given a power in a, perp in a person? It's for a purpose, and you shall be my witnesses. All of you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So some of you would say, well, smiley... <clears throat> Is, is good news a, is good news a, a, a go and, and, and share church or a, a, or a come and hear church? To which I would say, what? Yes. Yes. We're pro-evangelism. We want to take every opportunity to share the gospel. Listen, personal evangelism is very important, that, that we all can lead people to faith in Christ, and it's good to go, but it's also good to invite because one of the reasons we invite is sometimes another person's voice adds to our voice. I mean, maybe you're a wife, you keep telling your husband he needs to lose weight, he needs to lose weight, he doesn't listen to you. He goes to the doctor, the doctor tells him to lose weight, and he comes home and says what? I need to lose weight. Why? Because he heard it from another voice. When Jesus said to his disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men, they were fishing with a net. They were fishing with a net. And I believe as a church this week, we can all be a part of, of pulling in a net and seeing many people one to faith in Christ next Sunday. And here's what we can do. I want to share with you what you can do before and during and after the service next week. Before, you know what we can do this week? We can pray. We can pray that Jesus would draw people to himself. We can pray for the people we want to invite. We can pray. We can do that before the service. We can invite. I did that. I did the service on, on Monday, uh, and, and I stuffed my pockets with invitations and do you know booklets because I figured at the funeral I'd have a chance to invite people to our Easter service. When I, when I went to the funeral, I saw someone I hadn't seen since high school. It's been over 50 years. You know what? He's old. He looks really old. You know how I deal with age? I just never look in a mirror. You do know what Satchel Paige said, right? How old would you be if you didn't know how old you was? And, uh, and I saw him and he said, so I, I, I drove by your church last Sunday. The parking lot was full of people. Well, what's going on there? And I had my invitation. So I was about to do the service. I didn't have a chance to share the gospel with him, but I pulled out my invitation and said, you ought to come and see. Easter would be a great time. Come and see. Imagine if each of us this week were out taking advantage of the opportunities that we have to invite us. Come and see Jesus. So before the service, we can pray, we can invite, we can bring. During the service, can we fish together? Will you help us? Will you be here early next week? You know why? Often on special Sundays, our guests get here before our members, and that's sad. Wouldn't it be great when people come that they would be welcomed by loving people? You're way more welcoming than I am. I'd love for you to be here to welcome people. I think if people meet you, they'll want to know Jesus. And don't you remember what Jesus said in John 13? In John 13, Jesus said, By this all men will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Imagine you were here early because you wanted to welcome people. And imagine when, when it was time to sing that you sang because you wanted the people who came to realize you really believe this. You know why that means so much to me? The way I became a Christian, I was invited to Young Life. And I went into a room of people and there was so much love and joy in the room. I said, I don't know what these people have, but whatever they have, I want it. And I believe if people come next week and God's people are full of love and joy, then people will say, I don't know what they have, but whatever they have, I want it. <laughs> and you know what? If they're like that before I speak, it's so much easier to see them come to faith in Christ, isn't it? That's why we're all a part of this. We're fishing with a net, not with a rod and reel. And you know what you can do during the service? Not only welcome people and, and sing, but, but you can pray. When the gospel is shared, you can pray that he would convict people of sin. You can pray that he would open eyes to see Jesus. You can pray that he would draw people to himself. You can do that during that. We can do this together before and during and after the service. I'm sorry, I haven't taught you this in a long, long time, but 
Would you, would, would you follow the five-minute rule after the service? Would you give the first five minutes after the service, you can start practicing today, would you take the first five minutes next Sunday and not talk to your friends? Would you take five minutes and look for someone new and just go up to them and welcome them? Listen, we're in this together. Would you do that? You'd be amazed the impact of that. Why not invite someone to have lunch with you? Why not? Or invite them to, to have dinner with you. And then you could follow up on what happened in the service. If they're not yet to faith in Christ, maybe you can help them get there. And if they have come to faith in Christ, you could say, hey, would you like to follow Jesus with me? And you could begin to disciple them. And you say, but Smiley, I don't know how. Oh, Listen, we're equipping a lot of people right now to share their faith, and they're looking for someone to disciple. So if you'd like someone to disciple you so you could disciple someone else, just mark it on your card. We'll find you some who'd love to invest in you. <laughs> wow. Good news. Good news is for sharing, right? I mean, the angels shared, the, the women shared, the the, the two shared, the 11 shared. And this week, we get the opportunity, all of us do, we get the opportunity to share the good news. And we have that opportunity before and during and after the service next week. Wouldn't you love to see what could happen, wouldn't you? If all of us grabbed the net, wouldn't, it, wouldn't you love to see? And all of us pulled on it together. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming and living and dying and rising so that we could be forgiven, that we could do life and eternity with you. And listen, if, if you've understood that from the first, for the first time and would like this free gift, Jesus is here. Won't you just tell him, Jesus, I've sinned against you and I'm sorry. And I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose. And I want you to come in and, and be my Savior and forgive me and give me eternal life. I want you to be Lord of my life and help me be the person you want me to be. Oh, if you've done that for the first time, won't you mark that on your card? We, we'd love to celebrate with you and help you grow. And Jesus, I pray for all of us who know you that as we remember how good it is to be forgiven, that we would want to go out and share with others how, how they could be forgiven too. And Lord, that we would be so overwhelmed that we have been delivered from hell that we want to go out and share with others how they could be rescued too. And Lord, that we would find ourselves enjoying having breakfast with you so much this week that we would feel compelled to invite others to come and and know you too. Oh, Lord, we're praying that next week that, that working together we could see many, many people one to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.